Hi, how you doing? Um, just some thoughts on my camp out because I talked about how I was afraid to camp alone and stuff like that. So uh, this last camp hiking trip was all about just getting over that fear. Finally, just seeing what it's like to, to camp alone. Ooh, it was so good for me. Everybody should do that. Oh, it's just like really good for you. It's, you know, kind of like to face your fears and just to face fear all together and stuff like that. So first of all, I, I loaded up my backpack. I was worried because I'm always freezing cold at nighttime. So I packed my sleeping bag that I have. Like I have a really nice sleeping bag and then I have just a piece of crap sleeping bag. I packed a really nice sleeping bag. So it filled up my like the, it looked like I had a full backpack just filled with stuff, but really two thirds of it was just all sleeping bag. <laughs> and it was, it worked. It was the first time in my whole life I wasn't cold at night while camping. And I, even in the summer, I get freezing cold at nighttime camping. But that sleeping bag, it sure works. If you can stand to get it up there as heavy as it is and as big as it is, you won't be cold if that sleeping bag just kicks butt. Oh, it's such a good sleeping bag. I was really comfortable as far as temperature. And I, I would get in my hammock, I would get leg cramps. So I'd have to, about every like two hours, I'd have to jump out of the hammock and stand up and try to let my leg get back to normal again to recover from leg cramps. It's a common problem with me. No, it hasn't been so much lately. But I was dehydrated and I drank a beer instead of drinking water for dinner. So that, that's actually when I get leg cramps, moments like that. And then I'd, I'd get, you know, that would cool me back down again. Then I'd jump right back in my sleeping bag and it would warm right back up. And I just like, I never shivered. I was never cold for a second. Temperature wise, I was so comfortable. Ooh, it's, it's uh, pretty heavy camping alone. What I did was I picked. I picked a really scary area. I wanted just to, wow, I just, I can be kind of weird that way. I picked way up above everybody else, you know, there was no, nobody camps up where I was. So there's like no humans. And it was up, way up in, deeper into the mountains, right up higher on top of the mountain. Not on top, but higher up the mountain. At the bottom of this rock thing. It's just like, you know, right where there would be wildlife, you know. And uh, I just went right up in there, and it was it was really dark, and um, it was a nice warm night. It wasn't real windy. It didn't rain or anything, so it was a pretty nice night. But it was uh, at first, I was like, "Oh wow, this is <laughs> you know it's scary." But one thing I did right was I chose to listen to the right voices, and I chose to put the right voices in my head. I listened to all the right people that want me to succeed other people into bushcraft i listened to one woman that said you know don't when you see something at nighttime don't look at it and dwell on it because then it'll build up into this scary thing and you won't want to ever go again and another bushcraft guy said you know like realize that it's just the only difference is it's dark out there and that you know it's and to notice the sounds when you go to bed you know and sure, so I was listening, I'm like, yep, those are the same. I never noticed that the birds, they go all night long. All the, the chirping and swooping and walking on leaves and all that, those noises that birds make in the daytime, they make, they, they don't stop. They do that all night long. <laughs> what the hell? It's just, I think it's just different species of birds, but birds are crazy. They are just, they don't stop. It's so funny. Between like 3 and 4 a.m., it was quiet, but the whole rest of the night, there was just birds and just all over the place, things hopping around the bushes and just stuff all over. I think there was something, I don't know if it was a coyote, but I saw something at one point and, and I didn't let it scare me, you know? I just dealt with it. One thing I did was I brought my, uh, my Dark Crystal uh, Creation Myths magazine. It's like a, it's like a really nice book with the really cool art in it from the dark crystal. And I read that out loud to myself to make that, that human sound and human voice sound, you know? And, and uh, I read about Thra and, and the, the world of the dark crystal. 
which is a favorite story of mine and, and really enjoyed the story. I just really enjoyed that story. And it worked. I pretty soon I for, had forgotten about this, everything. But then it, I was sitting there sleeping. I was done reading. I was like, okay, now I better just go to bed. I still had my headlamp on. And then I could see it kind of like dimming just a little bit. I could tell the headlamp, it might not last all night. And then I wouldn't have it if I need it. I brought two headlamps and another light and, you know, plenty of lights so that that wouldn't happen. But, but then I thought, no, you have to dare to do this without lights. So I hit the, I hit, turned the headlamp off and it was so dark I couldn't even see my hand because my eyes hadn't adjusted yet. And I was like, wow, this is so, because you're in a hammock. So you're not, there's not walls of a tent. You're just right out in there, just, you know, right there, you know. And so I, I, at first I thought, this is crazy, but, but then my eyes adjusted and I just, I just, you know, added in the right amount of positivity and the right amount of, of uh, logic, you know, said, no, no, those are just the same noises that you've been hearing all day, you know, and, and your eyes adjust and I realize, you know what, I can see actually really good. And then I thought, that's kind of scary, you know, I can see and everything can see me, I'm just sitting here. But then after a while, I just, I did get used to it and I kind of just went the extra mile, being in a scary place and daring to look around and it was, uh, I got used to it, I really, you know, I don't know if I can explain it, but it just, it just kind of clicked. It was still scary, I was th you know. It, it would be scary if there was something significant, you know, like a coyote all of a sudden in your face or something. I don't know if that ever happens, but but I slept with my, my blade, my big giant violent knife with me that I showed you guys, you know, so that I had that comfort, you know. Yeah, something that's going to hurt me shows up, I'm going to chop one of its body parts off, you know, and cause it some serious damage. If it's going to come and get me, you know, <clears throat> or any, any humans or anything, but it didn't happen. It was comfortable and, and I got used to it and it felt really good. I, just like I was so, I was so brave. That was really brave. The, the campers, both the people that the last people as the sun was going down that, that hiked past where I was because it was right off the trail. And, and in the morning, so one, one hiker that hiked past me. They were all like, wow, you camped here alone at night? They didn't say that, but you could see they were looking at everything like, wow, you know, that's pretty impressive. It, it was impressive. I'm so brave sometimes. It was, it was fun, though. <laughs>